Amen. Good morning. What a wonderful place to be this morning. Amen. And uh, I'm glad the Lord is faithful and uh, knows where we are, not just in body, but he knows where we are in spirit and in every other category and way. He knows where we are. And I'm thankful for that this morning. I appreciate the songs this morning, appreciate the testimonies, I appreciate the shout. Amen. Uh, just it's when you've gone through some stuff. Uh, it makes the shout a little bit sweeter, doesn't it? And uh, when you've not just been saved, when we've gone through salvation, uh, we shout on the other end. My mom stood up and she just had a calmness and a peace and said, everything's going to be all right, even though cancer was all over her body. So some may not shout and kick like Pastor Richard does, but uh, we can have a peace in knowing that he's inside, amen, and we're in him and Everything's all right, and I'm thankful for that this morning. Uh, if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to 2 Timothy chapter 2 this morning. 2 Timothy chapter 2. It's good to see each one this morning, and I'm glad you're here. I hope you're glad you're here, and if you're not, uh, we'll pray, and you pray, and by the time you leave, you'll be glad you're here. Amen. 2 Timothy chapter 2, first five verses are going to be our scripture this morning. I spent time yesterday and over the past couple of days uh, chewing uh, on uh, out of Matthew chapter 4, where Jesus said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And the emphasis was going to be on follow me uh, somewhere early this morning. I began tossing and turning. I felt, told Janelle later, I felt like a fish out of water flopping this way and that way. And uh, around 4.30, quarter to 5, uh, God began to lay these verses out of Timothy uh, on my heart and on my mind this morning. And I believe it's where we're supposed to be this morning. And I want to ask you something. Uh, first, I want to ask CEO, will you pray over the message this morning, please? Yes. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask you this morning, if you're able, would you stand as we just honor God's word this morning? Second Timothy chapter two and verse one. Thou therefore, my son, this is Paul writing to Timothy, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And this, these next couple verses are the meat of where I believe the Lord wants us to get this morning. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life or of life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully. And we'll stop right there and you may be seated this morning. I want to ask you this morning, What are you battling? What battle are you going through this morning? What have you been dealing with past few days, past weeks, past months, maybe years? It's something that you're battling. I thought even sitting there this morning that sometimes we feel there's just a struggle and we may not even be able to put our finger on it, but Kelly, something just seems like it's off or it's not right. And We just feel a battle that's taking place. And uh, we understand this morning that uh, as Christians this morning, uh, as creations of God, we have an enemy of the soul who is constantly, understand, constantly warring for you and I. He's constantly, daily, hourly, every second, roaming as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour we need to live with that mindset, not in, in fear, but in just 
the common sense and respect and understanding that there is a war that is taking place. And that's really the, the bigger picture that Paul is telling Timothy when he says that no man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of life. And I'm asking the question this morning, what are you and I battling with this morning? Uh, but it's in the context of understanding there's a greater war taking place. There is a war going on for our soul. Uh, yes, the enemy fights and he wants to control the mind and he wants to influence the heart and direct our steps in a way that are away from God. He hates God. He despises God. And therefore, because of that, he despises and hates you and I. He's a very real enemy. He does anything and everything he can, even just to prevent us from getting saved. He'll work against as grace is working. The song that J.R. sang says, Grace has taught my heart to fear. And if it wasn't for grace working in my heart and in your heart before we ever accepted Christ, we wouldn't have known how badly we needed to be saved and that we needed the Christ who died on the cross of Calvary. And so anything the enemy can do, anything he can whisper to you and I to prevent us from finding an altar somewhere. I love praying in church. I love family prayer around the altar. I always have. It messed me up early on, John, to be honest honest with you because I thought everybody's praying out loud. I can't concentrate and how's the Lord going to hear me if everybody's praying out loud at the same time. And I've learned over the years to be okay with silent prayer or out loud prayer, but I love family coming together. I love the church coming together around the altar and praying together. But the enemy does all that he can to block anything you and I try and do that's going to walk us closer to the Lord that's going to invite Jesus Christ into our heart. And I believe this morning, whether we're saved, whether we're unsaved or stuck somewhere in between, we've got to understand that the enemy does not want you and I walking in Christ and Christ living in us and through us. Excuse me. So I ask you and I this morning, the Lord asks you and I this morning, what are we battling? What are we battling? Jesus fought the greatest battle of all on Calvary. And He died for you and I. And through Him, through that death, we have victory. You and I cannot fight the enemy on our own. We cannot engage in that war, that spiritual warfare that the Scripture tells us about. We talked about it in Sunday school today. From the very beginning, Satan has been after mankind and he's still doing the same today. And he's not afraid to sit beside you and I inside the church house. He's not afraid to come into your vehicle. He's not afraid to come come into your home. He relishes those places. He looks for any opportunity to attack and come after you and I this morning. So what are you battling? Sometimes we battle because it is a real battle. It is a real fight. It is a real war. Sometimes I believe we battle, Brother Richard, because I understand the battle and I'm not just giving in to what the Lord is asking. Because sometimes my battle isn't with the enemy. Sometimes my battle is with the Lord. This is the right answer. It's okay. Sometimes our battle is with what God is calling us to do, what He's placed upon our heart. Sometimes our battle, even after we're saved, is really surrendering and getting into the new life that is in Jesus Christ, that we put the toe in and, and we like how that feels and we like what we see. But then the Lord says, I didn't ask you just to dip your toes in on Sunday morning. I asked you to commit your life to me. I asked you to come 
come down from where you've been and to put yourself into me. And then we say, no, 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 I I just want to dip my toes in a little bit because I want to keep the majority of me up here because I want to remain in control. And we got to understand that's a picture of me battling with the Lord, that the Holy Spirit inside of us is trying to love us into the Lord and lead us into a deeper life. And the human side of me, what I'm used to and how I've been in the carnal side is saying, no, but I I want to remain up here because it puts me in control. So sometimes the battle isn't against the enemy. Sometimes the battle is between us and the Lord. And I want to tell you something. We're always miserable when we're fighting against God. We're always miserable when we're just not surrendering and submitting and trusting. I've been there and some of you have been there so you understand and you know what what we're saying this morning that sometimes the battle is that God is saying, I'm I'm asking you to do this. I'm asking you to trust me here. I'm asking you to, to turn this, whatever it may be, and we're wrestling with the Lord. Now when we hear that out loud, we think, That's ridiculous. Why would I wrestle with the creator of the world? Why would I wrestle with the one who willingly laid down his life on the cross to die for me? Because sometimes the other battle is that I love myself too much. I care about me too much. I'm still more fond of me than I am of Man, that's hard to say. Why? Why would I want to be fond of me? Why would I want to look at me and love me? A wretched, filthy sinner that required a pure Savior to die for me. Why in the world would I want to think anything more of myself than just an old sinner saved by God's amazing grace that deserved hell? Tom, but because of him, I get to live up there. But all, Chad is still so good. Chad is still, I I still got the better ways. I still got the better knowledge. I still got the better understanding. Brother, they need to see me. They need to hear me. They need to know me. There's more than I, 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 I need to die. John the Baptist said, I must decrease so that he can increase. You see, the problem is with it and is that we, we look at what I've got to give up. Oh, I don't want to let go of certain things. I, I've been this way all my life. But then this is the way I've always done it. This is how I've been raised. I'm just like my daddy. I'm just like my grandpa. I'm just like my mom and my grandma and my aunt and my uncle. This is just who we are. I joke, been joking around. I'm... I'm I don't know, four or five parts of a lot of different stuff. and Anyway, I won't go into the long story, but part of it is Scottish. I don't know what percentage. But we were not good people way back when. The burn claim. We raided camps and burned villages and all that stuff. Why do we want to be us more than we want to be doesn't make sense when we stop. Well, preacher, I got my own agenda. I got my life, and I want to live my life my way and my dreams and my visions. And I, I, listen, I'd be the last one to knock dreams and visions, but I will tell us they're absolutely wrong if they don't line up with Him and His ways. So yes, sometimes the battle is with the enemy. Sometimes the battle is, is with the Lord, and other times the battle is with ourselves. Paul told Timothy, I love as I was reading over this this morning, the relationship between Paul and Timothy was a beautiful relationship. And uh, he's encouraging this young preacher, this young pastor. 
And he tells him a few things, and we find twice in these five verses that the reference is made to being a soldier. You and I this morning, the Lord knows all about the battles that we face within and without. Anybody know the difference? We fight battles within, and we fight battles without. And Paul is encouraging Timothy. And I want to encourage you and I this morning with the same thing, because I feel like that's what the Lord is telling us today. Listen, I, I want you to know first off, this thing's not over. Your life's not over. This battle may be real and present and has been ongoing, but don't you dare let the enemy or yourself be convinced that this is as far as God's going to allow me to go. It's not over till God says it's over. And as long as there's breath within the body, we've got to keep on fighting. We've got to keep on warring. We've got to keep on pressing through. And that's one of the things he encourages him in. But I just want you to know this morning, you may, you and I get tired and we get weary and sometimes if we're honest I've gotten tired of seemingly praying the same prayer asking God to help asking God to deliver but I'm glad this morning John even though I've gotten tired of asking the same thing he has never turned an ear and said Chad I'm tired of hearing it would you stop coming to me but rather his arms stay wide open Kenny and he says son you come to Father, anytime you need to. This door is always open unto you. And you bring it as much as you need to. Don't ever stop coming. Because I'm here for you, son. I'm here for you, daughter. Paul's telling Timothy. First, he tells him, I love it, he says, my son, but be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. I'm going to tell you something. It might make you mad, but it ought to help you. Stop depending on yourself. You ain't got it. And the fact is, you and I ain't meant to have it. If I've got it, then why do I need Him? If I've got the strength. if uh, Some people say, well, God lets you go through that, Pastor, to see how strong you are. No. No, throw that false, fake theology out the window and understand we need Him for everything. And He allows us to go through things for us to get it through our thick heads that we need the Lord for it all. But He tells him, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. The grace we need to get through is found in the Lord. Sometimes the battles go on longer than they should because I keep trying it myself. I keep relying on me instead of on Him. Let's look real quickly. Or I'll say something, make you mad, then you'll turn me off and that won't be good. You'll change the channel. A good soldier. Four things we find in these five verses real quickly. If you're a Christian this morning, this is speaking to you and I as a good soldier. A good soldier educates others. A good soldier educates others. Verse 2, he says, And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Can I encourage you and I this morning that yes, it might be the fight that I'm going through, but we've got to look to one another and lean on one another and hook arms with one another and in the midst of it still find the way as the grace comes from the Lord Jesus Christ to educate others. Because there's others. When when, when Jesus talked to Simon, He said Satan in Luke chapter 22, I think, verses maybe 31, He said Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee. Isn't that wonderful? But then he says, and when thou art converted, when things have changed, strengthen your brethren. Teach somebody else. Invest 
in somebody else. Sometimes our struggle is because I'm trying to cram it all inside and keep it to myself, share it with somebody else, pour into somebody else, invest in somebody else so that when they get come along, they can teach somebody else as well. This thing isn't meant to just be about individuality. It's about togetherness and unity. And he says that a good soldier ought to educate others. Now, if there's any references I make in this, I've never been in any armed services. And I have the utmost respect for any and every individual that has or currently is. And so any reference I make, I make with very much caution because... I don't know about it other than what little bit I've learned through school and whatever else. But those individuals that go together, they aren't there just to say, I'm going to make it home and not worry about you. If somebody's lagging or struggling with their equipment or needing something, see, oh, because they're in it together, they say, hey, let me help you with that. Why? Because you're my brother. And if I don't help you, and you get caught by the enemy, you're dead, and I go on, and that's all my conscience because I didn't help you. They educate others. The encouragement that Paul has given to Timothy is to invest in other people. Timothy, just don't preach to them. Pour Christ into them. Pour Christ into them so that they grow. Amen. Just don't tell them what you know, Timothy. Show them what the things you've learned from me, those same things. Commit them and share them so that they grow. Then they turn around and teach somebody else. So a good soldier, you and I this morning, I want to encourage you, if there's not somebody you're pouring into, ask God to give you somebody. Ask God. Lord, Send me. Maybe it's a grandchild, a child. Maybe it's somebody not even in your family. Give me somebody that I can pour into. Secondly, this morning, a good soldier endures hardship. Man, that's not fun, is it? But we have to endure hardship. We have to keep going. Even though, Leanne, it's difficult. Even though we don't want to. Even though we're tired. Even though we're hungry. Even though we're cold. Even though we long for home and we miss home. And maybe we second guess the decision to go in the first place. But we have to endure hardship with the understanding the hardship is just a part of the battle. It's a part of the war. The Lord never promised sunshine and roses every day. Our growth and our, 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 our purifying, if, if you will, of our faith and of His grace in us and with us and through us comes through the hardships. You know why? And I'll, I'll pick on Brother Richard, but he's been walking with the Lord for a number of years. So he's grown in the relationship. But as I said at the very beginning, when you and I endure some hardship, and we find the Lord to be faithful. You can't help but have a victory shout somewhere along the way. You can't help but feel the oomph of gratitude swell up within you and say, if it had not been for the Lord, I'd have died a long time ago. If it had not been for the Lord, my family would not be here. If it had not been for the Lord, I'd be without a job. I'd be without this. Somewhere within us when we endure the hardship as a good soldier, we understand that every once in a while that captain deserves a wave of gratitude and some praise and honor because if it had not been for the Lord, you and I would not have what we have today. Amen? A good soldier endures the hardship. Thirdly, this morning, there's only four, so it tells you we're halfway there. Thirdly, this morning, a good soldier does not entangle themselves with the affairs. Scripture says, my Bible, of this life, the word this is italicized. So that means it's been added in. So if we leave that out, no man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of life. Why? Brother, I still got to live. I got to work. 
got to pay bills. I got to deal with people. We got to deal with life. But see, to get entangled means to get all caught up in something so that then we're distracted from what the real goal is. Our job is to be laying up for ourselves treasures in heaven. Our job is to, as Christians this morning, to let Christ be glorified so that others are drawn to Him and not to us. Our job and our focus is to be on helping to enlarge the kingdom. To be about, as Jesus said, don't you know that I must be about my Father's business? Well, His business is about souls. His business is about spiritual growth and enlarging the kingdom of heaven. When we entangle ourselves with the affairs of life, I'm distracted. I lose focus. The cares begin to bog me down. The worries that we're supposed to surrender. And, and the scripture even teaches us that they themselves choke out the word of God. Brother John, when I'm sitting entangled, the message that is preached goes in one ear and out the other. It's like water on a duck's back, Tom, because... I'm entangled. I'm so engrossed in the affairs of the, the businesses of this life. I couldn't help this morning as I was reading over it. My mind went to Matthew 6 where he said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these other things will be added unto you. You know what Chad's done too often? You haven't because you're better. Kelly, I've tried to add to my life and then think once I get that added, then I can get back to doing the other. He said, he didn't say seek me second or seek me after you've taken care of this. Seek me first. There's an order. There's a structure. There's a pattern that the Lord has given throughout Scripture. He told Joshua, this word you shall meditate on it day and night. You, it, shall not, it shall be in your heart. It shall come out of your mouth and you shall share it. And when you do that, then your way shall be prosperous and then thou shalt have good success. A good soldier entangles not. A good soldier says, man, I hate to hear what's going on but I'm going to be busy praying. A good soldier entangles not by saying, this world, I live here, but it's not my home. I'm longing for the things of heaven. we got to be careful because it's so easy to get entangled. It's so easy to get twisted up and tied up in things that, that it distracts us and, and pulls us away from the bigger picture. Lastly, this morning, and I'll close, and I... I want you to know, and I hope, I can only hope the Lord has helped to let it be preached in a way that if you're battling this morning, there's help. Amen. You don't have to battle it alone. We can be a good soldier because of the grace that is in Christ Jesus. The last thing he encourages Timothy in as a good soldier is to exercise a desire for two things. One, verse 4. One of the reasons not to get entangled is that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. See, I didn't sign up for this preacher. I didn't sign up for this war. I didn't sign up for these kind of battles. Whatever, however it's categorized in your I, I didn't sign up for it. Well, none of us would because it's just not the nature. But the Lord has chosen, chosen you and I. Paul later in this book would say, I've kept the faith. I fought a good fight. I finished my course. Now if Paul would have known on the road to Damascus, hey Paul, listen, when you get done fighting against me and you receive me, you're going to get shipwrecked, you're going to get beaten, you're going to, go, you're going to starve, uh, you're, you're going to be left alone. It's going to be a long, boring, not boring, but a long, lonely road. 
Paul probably would have served Saul at the time. I'd have said, somebody get me out of this light. Let's just keep going on the way we've been because that seems easier. The Lord, where you're at right now is no mistake. I love in Genesis, after the Lord put Noah and his family into the ark, and I got her in clothes, but I want you to get this encouragement. I believe it's chapter 8 that says, And God remembered Noah. God has not forgotten where He's allowed you to be placed. He's not forgotten the boat that you're in. And, I, and He's not forgotten the storm. He's not forgotten the trial. He's not forgotten the difficulty. He's not forgotten all that you are battling or going through. He doesn't forget His kids. And so Paul was encouraging Timothy Fight the good fight. Don't get entangled with the affairs of life. Why? So that you can please Him. Don't you want to please the Lord? Amen. Even in the midst of all of our faults and failures, there's still a desire that says, I want to please the Lord. I want to please the captain. Those that, the, the, the good soldiers, as commentaries would say, they had the desire that said, I, I want to please the captain. When we get back to camp, I want him to say, good job, man. Way to hang in there. Way to press through. Way to fight. And don't you and I want to hear, enter in thy good and faithful servant? Isn't that what we long to hear? And that's pleasing the captain. I'm glad we can know here that every once in a while the comforter will come and, and he'll wrap his arms and, and the Lord may say, keep on hanging on. Keep on fighting. Keep on trusting me. Keep on clinging to the promises. It's worth it. It's worth it. But a good soldier wants to please the captain. He exercises that desire. And lastly this morning, a good soldier exercises the desire to do things the right way. He doesn't abandon the band of brothers and say, well, I've got a better strategy. He sticks with the orders that he's been given that have the greater percentage of chance to lead to success. You and I cannot go rogue when the battles are taking place. We can't adopt the philosophy that says, I'm better off on my own, or it's better off to do it this way. Families, husbands and wives, moms and dads, grandmas and grandpas, church leaders and alike throughout our country and nation and towns, we can't abandon the teamwork. We can't abandon the component that says you have a greater chance of success by working together and doing it the way that it was planned. You see, Paul was encouraging Timothy. You may be tempted at times, Tim Timothy, to cut some corners. You may be tempted at times, Timothy, because of frustration and tiredness and fatigue to say, I don't need to do it the right way. See, oh, a good soldier says, I just don't want to win. I want to know I've done it the right way. I want to lay my head down at night and know that even if I messed up through the day, I've still tried the right way. I've still sought success the right way. I've not kicked somebody down, Ellen, to make myself better. Not to, we, and I believe the Lord calls us through the Holy Spirit inside of us. His desire is to do things God's way. And as He's working through us and leading us, He'll lead us to do things God's way. I want you to be a good soldier this morning because I'm trying to be a good soldier. I want to please the Lord. I want to make it. Not just through the battle, but we can win the war because of who's already won it for us. You don't have to fight it alone this morning. You don't have to battle alone this morning. There's one that loves you beyond measure. And he says, I'm trying to encourage you not to give up in the battle, not to cheat, not to take corners, and not to do it in an ungodly way. But if you're going to follow me, then follow me my way. I don't know what you're battling this morning. He says, Ellen comes, if you would, give us, play something for us. And I, I know you know this already. The battles are real. And they're tiresome. 
and they're weary and they're heavy and they're difficult. But we've got somebody who's willing to come to the aid of His children. He's willing to give the strength and the help that is needed. So we stand this morning. If you're battling this morning about salvation, just give in. Just give in and receive the free gift of salvation. You'll never regret that decision. If you're battling this morning against the Lord, just give in. It's, it's pointless to wrestle against Him. Just surrender and submit. Let Him have His way this morning. If you're battling with yourself, just understand the Lord loves us so much that He's saying, I've still got them as good as your way might be. Mine is still a whole lot better. I don't know the need this morning as she plays. Just give your battle to the Lord this morning. Whatever it might be, commit your way to Him. Say, no matter what, I want to be a good soldier. I want to educate others along the way. I want to endure hardness as a good soldier. One has come if others need to come. I don't want to be entangled, preacher, with the things of this life. They're just depressing and discouraging. And I just want to be free to really pray for souls and serve and minister and live the way the Lord wants me to live. And have a desire that is an example that says, I want to do things God's way. I want to please Him with all that is within me. I'm glad He's on our side. He's for us and not against us. All this seems impossible in our own strength, but it's possible when we're strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. We've got a couple at the altar. Some of you ladies will come and pray with these that have come. Friend, turn your battle over to the Lord this morning. Whatever that may be, turn it over to the Lord. Let Him have the battle. You just rest and trust in Him this morning. I don't come to you. I don't call you out anybody here this morning say preacher I'm not saved that's my battle this morning I'm not ready for heaven the Lord's been dealing with me I know I need to be saved but I haven't given into that yet I haven't accepted salvation please pray for me would you just slip your hand up this morning saying that's me remember me this morning is there anyone this morning as a Christian says preacher there's a battle and it's real I just need prayer this morning. My family's in a battle. I'm in a battle. Whatever it might be, see that hand. Anyone else this morning, see that hand. Anyone else? There's a real battle. And I need prayer this morning. If any others want to pray on behalf of someone else, I want to encourage you to do that this morning. If you want to come around these, come and do and let's pray.
Jesus and now. Wow. Isn't God good? I don't know about anybody else, but I'm sure glad I'm here this morning. Amen. And I'll tell you something else. By the grace of God, Lord willing, I'm going to be here tonight at 6 o'clock. Amen. Brother Bob McIntosh, dismiss us, would you? Thank mm-hmm. you.